Oh my goodness. On today's episode, we talk about tools and how tools aren't the secret, but there's ways to use them. And I share my top five tools for running a simple, strong, and almost guaranteed to succeed business, plus a story of how I got here. And uh, newsflash, I just made an announcement for the first time publicly that I haven't shared with anybody else about me and my family and what's on the horizon for us. But I'll get into all of that in the show. So without further ado, go listen to tools and software we use, what you need to have, and then the news that's coming in the episode. Get ready. Here we go. I'll see you guys in the episode. Well, hello, beautiful people, beautiful people, beautiful people. This is a Wednesday episode, and you might be listening to a Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I say that all. I got to come up with a better way to summarize that, but this is a winning Wednesday. And today, as I said in the intro, we're going to be talking about tools, software, tools, software. But before we get there, I want you to know that I am extremely happy, and I have a story to tell, and this same story applies to software and tools and our business. So... I'm putting this into the world right now, pub- publicly, probably for the first time, uh, but my family and I currently live in California, and we are moving to Montana. So we are moving to Montana. I couldn't be more excited. I was never a California boy. I grew up on the East Coast. I grew up in New England. I grew up with Four Seasons. My wife grew up in California. My daughter does, but they both want Four Seasons. We want more weather. Personally, I want more nature in my life. I want less distraction, less noise less everything. I want simplicity. I want lakes. I want mountains. I want cold weather. I don't want to have to build an ice bath in my garage to get cold. And so I'm excited. But something really interesting happened. My family just got back from Montana. My wife and daughter were there for six days, road tripping and looking at all the areas and cities. And they came back inspired. And I mean inspired. And I have a hoarding, I have a hoarding inclination we'll call it sometimes, all the way from my childhood, but everything, like I'll hoard extra camera equipment for the business, I'll hoard extra software for the business, I'll keep services that I pay for that I quote unquote might use, I'll keep that thing that I might use someday or that I've never touched or never been open, but I might need it that day, I'll keep clothes that I might want to wear again or shoes that are broken but or old that it's like I have a new pair, but like those ones are so comfortable. And I, f- I realized this about myself. I realized this about myself. And so my family came back from Montana, my wife and my daughter, my son and I were here, and we went on spring cleaning. And I mean spring cleaning. We are all cleaning clothes and cleaning out the house and cleaning out the garage. And we're like, do we need it? No. It's like, do we want it? Yes. Is it going to cost more to move it than it is to get a new one? Yes. Would it be better to start fresh? Yes. And so we've been going crazy, crazy cleaning. And then it brought up this beautiful thought in me when I came down and sat at my desk this morning to get to work. And it was like, where else do I hoard things in the business? Where else do I complicate processes that I might need or I might use instead of just really cleaning them up? And so today's podcast is about software and the software that I use in my business. And there's some really important things to understand with software or tools in the business. And what I have found is just like social media is this giant distraction, this giant distraction of like, give me your attention, go here, go here, go here, go here. The entrepreneurial world is no different. There are an umpteen amount of tools to choose from. And there's always new ones coming in to try to convince you why they're better and convince you why you should go and convince you why you should leave, convince you why they should do yours, convince you that they'll move you over for you. But I think what's really, 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 really important to understand at the end of the day is that tools do not do the job for you. They allow you the ability to use them to accomplish a goal. And you can't use two hammers at one time. You can't use two hammers at one time. I literally pulled this up and I found tool quotes because it's so imperative that we understand. There's one that says it's essential to have good tools, but it is also essential that the tool should be used in the right way. Uh, A good tool improves the way you work. A great tool improves the way that you think. 
you cannot mandate productivity, you must provide the tools to let people become their best. And so when we think about this, when we think about this, we really have to understand first why we're using the tool, what we're going to be utilizing the tool for, and then how to properly utilize it to get the most out of it. And the reason I say that is because I could throw a carpenter a Phillips head screwdriver and I could tell them to build a room and they could. It would take a lot of time and let's assume all the wood was pre-cut and they just had, you know, screws. It would take a long time. I could also hand that same carpenter a power drill uh, and a, or a screw gun and give him the screws. He could do it a lot faster. They both accomplish the same one, the same goal, but you have to understand the constraints in the container and why we're doing what we're doing. And so this is a full disclosure. I have continued to pay for software or services in the business that I quote unquote might use as a way to actually prevent myself from using them. I'm going to say that again. I have paid for softwares or services in the business or hoarded these tools as a way of convincing myself that if I continue to pay for them, that I might make it a priority and I might use it, well, all I'm really doing is costing myself money and being inefficient because I'm just putting it out there and putting it out there and putting it out there. And so one of the things that we're doing and we continue to do is ask ourselves, like, do we need this? Does this help us accomplish the goal in an easier manner? Is this the most effective tool for the job? Is this the best way to get it done? Does this hit all the wickets? And I am not romantic about the tools that we use, but I make sure that I don't make any, any squirrel decisions of like, oh, there's a new one. Oh, there's a better one. Oh, there's a shiny one. Because all too often, and I mean all too often in business, in my business in particularly, I have jumped shipped thinking the grass was greener on the other side, only to realize that the software I was currently using did what I needed. I just didn't see it because I was biased. I was blindly biased that something new and something shiny and something over there was going to help me get there sooner. But at the end of the day, like in our business, our job is to be in deep relationships with our customers. Our job is to create content that helps you ethically build and scale your business. Our job is to have touch points that always make sure you feel safe and that you matter. And so right off the bat, I have Bonjoro. And Bonjoro is number one on my list for the software that I use in my business. Bonjoro is an app that allows me to set up automations that every time you come into my world, whether you give me your email, whether you buy a product, whether you opt in for something, whether you complete a part of a course, basically anything that I can trigger with Zapier or anything else, it will give me a to-do item to send you a video. And I will know what you did and then I will open my phone and it'll say, send Tyler a video, send Jay a video. And it'll say, send him a video for buying the course, send him a video for opting in, send him a video for leaving a podcast review. And so then I open my phone, I record a video and I'm like, Jay, thank you so much for reviewing the podcast. I love you. Or Tyler, thank you so much for buying the course. I am super honored to have you. I want you to know that you're safe. I want you to know the commitment from me and my team to you. And I want you to know that everything is easy. There's an email in your inbox of this subject line, right? And so Bonjoro is a tool that allows me to send a personalized video message to you or to anybody else under any circumstances that I deem necessary. And so one of those is new clients, new purchasers, new mastermind members, all of the things that I can track and automate. Obviously, I would need your you know, email for this to happen or a purchase. I can't just do this because you hit my website yet. And so that's why we use this tool. And it fits into our bucket of like, let's keep this simple. We want to connect with our customers. I can't go manually emailing a video to each one of them, adding them on Facebook to send a video. This automates the process for me and it makes it easy. And then as you scale with Bonjoro, as you scale with Bonjoro, you can also have pre-recorded messages and that's completely fine too. And you can send up to 50 at a time. And so when I work with supplement companies or physical product companies, we know that when you order something, you'll get a receipt and then you'll get a shipping notification, delivery notification. And so we'll pre-record amazing messages from the founder that says, hey, I am super honored to have you. Your receipt is in your inbox. We're going to get to work on processing your order. Welcome to the family. Let us know how we can support you. And then we'll record another video so that when they get a uh, shipping notification, 
that it would send another video like, hey, it's George. I just want to let you know that we just dropped your bag off at the post office where UPS just picked it up and it's on route. There's an email in your inbox with the tracking information. Let us know what you have. And then sometimes we'll have a delivery one like, hey, go to your door. Sometimes the UPS drivers have been known to steal the packages because the product is so good, but it just said it was delivered and we want to make sure you get it. And so we don't pretend to personalize them. We just tell them we're sending them a video and this is why. And so Bonjoro is an amazing tool that we use, but it's one of those tools that helps us be in a deeper relationship and a more connected relationship with our customers and allows us to use it. And with that, I have a quick story because since I've been using Bonjoro, a few other platforms have come on the market. A few of them have come on the market. Now I've been using Bonjoro for three years and I love it because I know it and it's easy. Is it clunky? Sometimes. Could there be improvements? Sometimes. But does it help me accomplish the core mission and do we all know how to use it? Yes. And so then these new ones came on. I'm like, oh, they have all these features and all these features. And I was like, we need this and we need that and we need this. And I spent a month going over these features, signing up for trials, and I could never get it fully set up and operational to where Bonjoro was. So it was just a distraction. Now, will I eventually move? Sure. Maybe. But it has to make sure that it allows us to do what we do with at least as minimal friction as possible. And so Bonjoro is my number one tool. So for those of you wondering, I'm going to make this easy for you. All the software we recommend um, is at mindofgeorge.com slash software. So www.mindofgeorge.com slash software. And Bonjoro is my number one for relationships and touch points and community building. Okay. And so I'm going to go through the other four right now for how we use them. And, and there are more, but I wanted the beginning of this episode to be really about us asking ourselves the question, do we need this tool? Is this tool the most effective tool that we have? Does this help us be as efficient as possible, help our team be as efficient as possible? Or is this one of those, the grass is greener on the other side? I think a tool is going to solve a problem that I have to solve. And the one thing I want you to remember through all of this is that you still have to use the tool. The tool does not solve anything for you. Now, you the tool might automate a ton of stuff that then allows you to complete the last step, right? And so when we think about automations, automations and efficiencies are designed to automate the things that a human is not required to do so that you can be a human where you're required to do it. And that's how I look at tools. So number one is Bonjoro, okay? Now, when we get to number two, number two is a website. Now, when I think about website, I think about a lot of things. You'll see are everything from funnels to um, Kajabi, which uh, to MemberPress for WordPress, to ClickFunnels, to Thrivecart, to uh, Kartra, to all these landing page builders, to Wix, to Squarespace, to Shopify, to all of these things. And so to decide where you spend your time, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, what do I need to accomplish? What do I need to accomplish? And so for us, it's like, what do we need? Well, we need a website for podcast. We need a place for our blog posts and our content. We definitely need sales funnels. We're going to have to use those. Uh, we're going to need a membership platform. We're going to have to use those. And I was like, so what's the best way to get this done? And we've used all of the tools. And I mean all of them. And so for me, what was really important is longevity. I really believe in owning my audience and owning my traffic and owning my data. I don't want some company to own my stuff. I don't want some company to be responsible for how fast my website is or if it works or not or if their stuff goes down or not. And so I've used every sales funnel software, everything that's out there. And my preference, hands down, is drop funnels. My buddy founded, my buddy Jordan founded Drop Funnels, and Drop Funnels is basically a funnel builder on top of WordPress. And as you know, WordPress has been around forever. Matt Mullowing found in WordPress. It is the best for SEO. We've been blogging on it for years. You have full customization. You own everything. You get to make it work. And it's just as easy as any of these other platforms. But they try to sell you convenience at the sacrifice of your ability to build your own identity and own your own stuff. And so we use Drop Funnels. It allows us to build landing pages, sales pages, collect payment. It has its own cart function. It has all of these things. And when we started using it, we weren't using all of those features. We realized that this had the ability to be everything that we needed, but we wanted the website function first. And so we moved the website to it. We built up Mind of George on it, right? Like the software, mindofgeorge.com software that I mentioned. That's where you'll see all of this. And then we were like, yeah, this can do this. So then we started moving our sales funnels from Kajabi into drop funnels and our landing pages from 
Instapage into drop funnels and getting the team really bought in. And so what we decided is we looked at the long game. We're like, this is the thing that's going to get us all the way there. And we're not getting off of it. We are keeping it. We are using it. So let's figure a way to iterate this in and phase this in. And so we started using drop funnels. And so now every time we build something new, we build it in drop funnels. And then we prioritize moving other stuff that may still be out there into drop funnels from the platforms they're on. And drop funnels for me, was one of the easiest decisions ever. I've been using WordPress forever. I'm familiar. My team's familiar. I want good SEO. I want to be able to control my website. Plus, I want to make beautiful funnels and minutes and ease and have fast load times. And I mean super fast load times, like 1 20th of other softwares and services that are out there because on WordPress, you... Wherever you pay for your hosting, you own your server. Whether you're paying you know, 20 bucks a month, you're on a shared server, or you get a lot of traffic, you can up it. But when you're on a company like a SaaS platform, you're competing with everybody else. And I've seen people's homepages built on these quote-unquote landing page builders loading in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, which will destroy your business. So for our website, we use drop funnels. So my number one relationship tool uh, is Bonjoro. My number one home building tool is drop funnels, and then my number one communication tool, which is email, is ConvertKit. And just for everybody to understand, I have used every single email platform in the world. I have used Drip, Retention Science, Clavio, um, ConvertKit, MailChimp, Aweber. What else? I've used Kajabi. I've used Actionetics inside of ClickFunnels. Um, I have used Just Send Grid. I have used. Uh, there's another one I used that was ridiculously priced. It was like $4,000 a month, but I can't remember that one. So there's no point in having that one. I've used all of them. And at the end of the day, the questions I ask myself is what is the easiest way to deliver the message I need to deliver to my audience at scale? And that's what email is for. And I was like, so what's the best platform that allows me to do it with no crazy setup and no crazy clunk, but having the ability to do automations and automate all of it while having the best deliverability rates in the game? And that's ConvertKit. And I know the founder, Nathan. I've known him since day one. I was one of the first 100 people on ConvertKit. And I've used it in conjunction with other platforms. And I always end up back on ConvertKit every single time. Their deliverability is through the roof. Their functionality is through the roof. Their support system is through the roof. It is the one platform that I've been able to build every single automation that I teach Every single one, automating 99.9% .9 of your email except the one broadcast that you want to send because you're bored. I've been able to do all of that inside of ConvertKit from visual automations to rules to sequences to condition-based logic to even having one email go out to a 1,000 people and each person shown a different email based on their information, all with ease. No crazy coding, no crazy anything, and hand over hand, no one and not one other platform has ever beaten them in deliverability for me. In reputation deliverability, Nathan prides himself on it. His whole job, and he says it quite frankly, is my only job is to be the best CRM on the planet, to be the best email on the planet, not to be the best everything, but to be the best email. So my stack is my website is built on drop funnels. My communication tool and relationship tool is Bonjoro. And then my email is on ConvertKit, which allows me to deliver all of these experiences. And so our end goal is that we have just that. That's it. That's all we're going to have is those three things. And even our membership stuff is getting moved into drop funnels and it will take time, but it's one of those things that I want to be an Olympian. And so I'm going to practice every day to be able to compete at the Olympics. These are the tools that I realize can take me where I want to go. And so I'm going to start using them every single day as I clean up my toolbox, like I've been cleaning up my house for the last couple of days to create space and create simplicity. Because at the end of the day, the tool's job is to allow things to function seamlessly with simplicity and no stress to allow us to do what we do, which is to serve our clients, to sell our products and deliver on those services and products to achieve the best result for them and for us. And so if we're spending our time in tools and broken tech and jumping ship all the time, none of it's going to work. And so we have to pick one, be consistent and go. And so the last two tools I have, I'm going to bunch together because they're really important. So as you guys know, this is our podcast. We are over 100 episodes in now in a couple of months. We launched it on a whim. And so these two tools are how I do everything in the podcast, everything. And so it is how I record, edit, and then publish the podcast and then where I host the podcast. So Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T, Descript is what we use for the podcast. We can record in it. 
it automatically transcribes for us. It produces audiograms <laughs> of our content for us. It allows us to edit it in there. No matter where we are in the world, we're all editing the same file. And it even has crazy built-in artificial intelligence tools, which if I'm talking in this podcast and I say something wrong, I can go into it, delete the words on my keyboard, it will delete the audio, and then I can type words, and it will use AI to make my voice match it. Or, as people remove like ums and ahs, which we don't, but I could go into the description and and search for um and hit delete, and it will delete um, like audio ums from the entire episode. And so Descript is how we do it. It's our repository, so it's where all of our episodes live. It's where we add our intro and our outro and all of it. And they are an amazing company that we found last year that has been absolutely phenomenal in helping us. And then the second tool for the podcast is called Simplecast. And Simplecast is where we host our podcast and then publish it there. And so Simplecast is what we found. We love it. Um, It allows us to do a lot of things like create our own recasts. You listen to this podcast. You can go pick a part that you like, select it, and make a video recast of it. And so those are the two tools that we use for the podcast. So Descript is where we record it edit it and all of it. And with Descript, you can record outside of it. Like if you record video, you can literally upload the video into Descript, strip the audio and do all of that. And then Simplecast is where we host it. And that's where we host it. And then it's published. And that's what we embed into our website and our blog and all of those beautiful things. But what I also love about Simplecast is they basically give your own website as well. So you don't actually need a website if you're just getting started. So these are the pieces of software and tools that we primarily use in the business over everything else. And of course, there's like communication tools for the team, project management tools, but like this is the stuff, like the engine of the business. Like this is the core of all of it. And these are the ones that I recommend. So number one is Bonjoro. Number two is Drop Funnels. Number three is ConvertKit. Number four and five are Simplecast and Descript for the podcast. And so what we did is we put all these together on one page for you. It's at mindofgeorge.com slash software. So www.mindofgeorge.com slash software to go check them out, link any more. And I'll be actually having the founders of these companies on the podcast because I know all of them to talk through them, get their case studies because there is an expansive amount you can do with them. And so my challenge for you is to pick a tool and use it and keep using it because if you have the right one and you think about the game and the game that you want to play, the tool that you have is probably one of the best ones and the grass is not always greener on the other side when it comes to tools and software. So I'm going to wrap here. Have an absolutely beautiful day. I'm going to go drink my coffee and envision my move to Montana, which makes me so happy. I will see you guys in the next episode. Remember, relationships always beat algorithms and now it's time to cue the outro. Bye.